Good morning, folks, and welcome to Flaming Freedom Live via the Liberty Radio Network. This is your host, Dale. I've got Lauren and Dason joining me today. Uh, we are going to talk about World Pride 2017 a little, and then we're going to uh, cover the Urban Dictionary Word of the Week that we missed last week, Deep Fave. And we've got some listener comments I'm going to share with folks. And we have a teen who was forced to dress as a boy, look like a boy for his license photo. And I'm going to uh, cover a blog post about why some see feminism as a hate movement. Um, we're going to talk about how I love vegans and when trolling is the appropriate response. Should you actually go to jail for kid diddling? And by that, I mean baby goats. I don't mean, you know, kids. <laughs> Game of Thrones porn. We're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about Gay of Thrones, which is a really cool show on YouTube. And then uh, we're going to talk about bears who like oral, and I don't mean chunky leathermen. And then we're going to talk about an LGBT-only you- Dutch village that doesn't actually exist but was reported on. For the straight listeners, um, a, a bear is a gay man who's like very furry or like hairy, has a beard. I think it's hairiness, macho, kind of macho-ness in general, like stereotypically masculine. Okay. So and then, um, and I did, then I didn't know that they had to be kind of chunky. Well, that's it's it's. They, they're, they're usually, it usually means that they're n- not necessarily chunky, but definitely. I, not, I know that there's le- leather involved usually, right? Uh, uh, not, all, not necessarily. Oh, Bear right. doesn't always, always mean. I, I well, think a terrible gay man. Grizzly Adams with, yeah, as a gay man, and that's a bear. Yeah, pretty much. They're, you know, fond of beards and and body hair and muscles yeah. or stomach or whatever. Pretty much, <laughs> like, he's gonna go with an axe and chop down cut, some trees. Imagine big and, and then suck on him. Oh, yeah. What? Imagine big and cuddly. Okay. That's the trick to it. Right? I'm looking out for the straight oh. listeners. Uh, I got to adjust the camera now that uh, Dason's here. <laughs> okay. So, let's see. There's also, um, and I don't know if you just mentioned this, but the LGBT only Dutch village, like that was the, the actual image that we have set up right now. That is oh. what I really want to talk about. The du- the uh no, that's actually from World Pride 2017. The, you mean the image that's on our show page today? Well, yeah. No, I yeah. thought it was related. It's not. That's from World Pride 2017. Okay. That's and for, I'm surprised. That's Madrid. I'm really surprised that you put a rainbow up there because I, know, I how know how you are in the rainbow. Well, it's, or with it's, the rainbow. it's we're talking about pride, and that's what they use. Hmm. So you're right. I'm not a fan of rainbows. Rainbows are. Uh, I'm I'm a fan of tacky. real rainbows. Yeah, real ones. Yeah, real rainbows They're are so fine. pretty. But like using rainbow designs. And in places like forget any kind of color scheme at that point, you've ruined it. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> I can't believe gay people came up with there's, this. There's no way to match, right? Like, there's like especially <laughs> gay men who are so pick, concerned pick about the way that things look. Couple of complementary colors and, or something. Yeah, you know, uh, and and that'd be one thing. But a rainbow, I, that it was made by the rainbow was came up with by like the nerds, the ultra nerds of <clears throat> the LGBT people who don't really. I don't know, have design notions. <laughs> don't know. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I think we'd all be wearing like superhero costumes and stuff too if we let them have too much uh, creative control. <laughs> Which, no, that, that part might be fun, actually, though. That part could be fun. Now, uh, that'd be better than rainbows, but. Now, you, I think you forgot one more thing that we we're supposed to talk about today. Okay. We went oh, to yeah. an amazing wedding last That's... night or yesterday or today or. I'm still wearing the same dress because I had that good of a night. <laughs> this is a thing for you now. You keep coming in wearing what you were wearing the night before. And I'm like, well, you were up late, weren't well, you? Well, you you, you're you seeing me now. So you see me the night before, and now I come yeah. in, and it's, yeah. Well, that's how I know you've had a late night. I'm going to have to go to places where you aren't. And then you have to go to work right after the uh, show. Let's not talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel for you. My heart goes out don't to you. Don't give away my secrets. I don't have your youthful energy anymore. <laughs> I'm not that youthful. Yeah, we're definitely. All right, so that's next up. We're going to have to talk about That was a really fun wedding. That oh, was, was a great time. It was time. beautiful, too. It was beautiful. It was oh, touching. It was such a good there wedding. There were some people get that spoke, and uh, I hope they got that on video, because that was just... But I don't know if they did. I didn't know if anyone was recording know, you, when people were giving their messages. All the libertarians <laughs> with their cra- ca- cameras all I know. the time. Yeah. Hmm. But hopefully someone got that on camera, because that was a great... That, that was a really cool thing. I There were some photos of, of Flaming Freedom hosts. Yes. Weren't there? Yeah, I'm going to put that up for people. 
I shared that on Google Plus recently, but I haven't. I'm going to put it up actually for uh, for our people. To you're trying see. to get me to join, aren't you? Uh, Google Plus. You're not on Google Plus. Uh, no. Oh. Uh, you can do what you want. One it's step fine. At a time. I'm over there, so uh, it, it, it's not crucial. It'll be fine. So uh, let's talk of deep fave real quick because we missed it last week. I don't want to miss it again. And then we're going to talk about the wedding. Mm, speaking awesome. of social media, deep fave is when you're stalking someone on Facebook or Twitter and you accidentally like a post of theirs from two years back, re- revealing how deep you have dug into their past. <laughs> Have you ever done that? I think it's fun if you do it on purpose. Like, you know, somebody might be doing it when they're a little intoxicated, let's say. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, that's okay. If that happens, whatever, we'll get over it. But it's it's really fun to just, like, find someone who you don't know that well and just go way, way back. Like, I'm not just talking, like, a few years. I'm talking, like, you know, 2004 and just like stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I Well, I think the thing is, like, if you've ever, like, you see someone new on Facebook and they friend you or something and... I don't do this anymore because I don't friend people so haphazardly, right? Because it's just it's just weird. I don't want like all these people that just to share stuff See, with and be uh, overloaded with information. For me, I do it as a form of like a I, I teach them about data security, right? So like it's a reminder that whatever you put on the internet stays on the internet. Obviously, they have yeah. some control over it, but it's like. It just reminds them, like, hey, don't guys, just friend anybody. Like, friend yeah, people that you want. I mean, I'm as, as it is. I, I'm, I, you know, I reluctantly caves for the sake of the show. And I'm back on Facebook, and I'm already like regretting the decision to a large extent. But I'm being super, like, not. If, I'm, if I don't see you every month and talk to you, you're not going to get friended on my Facebook. So <laughs> I'm really, I'm being super picky about it. I wanted to actually write an app or write a, some kind of a program that's called like Super Fave. So it's you, you become my friend on Facebook and then suddenly my computer algorithm goes through and just likes everything and likes all your photos. That'd be and awesome. likes, it just likes everything. <laughs> wow, about that's you. a great idea. Just yeah. Sort of counteract because and we'll talk a little, you know, while we're on it, we're going to talk about it briefly. Oh. Uh, I hate to do it, but we got to talk gonna, about Are this. we going to give some more Facebook hate? No, it's not, this isn't really so much about, positive? this is about solving the problem. This is about solving the problem, right? Facebook. Okay. Hitler. But Facebook sends, if you, if you like flaming freedom or whatever you like, whatever show or, or, page for whatever subject that you like when you sign up and say that you like it they and someone posts something to that page only three percent give or take a little of people who have liked that page actually get a notification and now what facebook does is if you're if you're interacting with them more like if you click like and share and if you pay post comments on that it starts to share more of that with you you're and that number will go up like those posts will say, oh, okay, so this will, it will have a greater reach is what they call it. This is just their way of like trying to squeeze extra money out of people. But the organic way of seeing more posts that you like and stuff is by actually interacting with them more, clicking like, commenting, everything. So if you want to see Flaming Freedom show up more on your notifications, you've got to interact with us. And uh, one way to do that that we created is the Flaming Freedom Evangelist Group. Now, Flaming Freedom Evangelist means that when you when we post something, you don't join this group unless you're okay with this. We send you a message, not a post. We send you a message that you, I'm pretty sure, 100 percent for sure get that says, "Hey, this is up. Go go click like and share uh, early, hopefully, so that it actually gets more uh, reach and reaches more people." So, and they don't do that, by the way. <laughs> we have like 23 people or whatever who signed up as evangelists. And they don't respond at all. They do not go and click like. They do not go and <laughs> comment or whatever. Uh, click share. So, um, but uh, that's what it is. So if you are someone who signed up for that, or if you want to sign up for that, you can send me a message on Facebook and we'll get you in there. Uh, but, but just be aware you're going to get a, a, you know, a little message every, you know, two or three times a week. And the whole point of that is so that you'll know about the post and then you can go and interact with it in some way. Like, share, comment. All right, folks. Uh, so that's how we're going to fix the Facebook problem. You're listening to Flaming Freedom, LGBT Libertarians Shooting the Poop. This is Dale. Jason. And Lauren. We'll be right back, so stay tuned. I asked some of the biggest fans of Flaming Freedom where we discuss LGBT topics from a liberty perspective, what sorts of things they'd done to support the show. I've been mining butt coins since they were pennies apiece. I've donated thousands of dollars of butt coin to Flaming Freedom. I gave Dale my handicap lacquered. Pretty sure that's a felony. We handed over our firstborn. I don't 
what they're up to with that boy, but I'm sure it's wholesome. There's too many buttons. I don't know which button you want me to push. I told you already it's a knob. Raise the gain on microphone two, you worthless brat. I had flamingfreedom.com tattooed across my labia. And I'm a prostitute, so all my clients see it. Wow, that's something. But there's a much easier way to show your appreciation. Just click like and share the episodes on your favorite social media networks. Oh, here we go with the wanting and the needing. And can you do this for me? And can you do that for me? My index mouse finger is all achy from the gout. I can't be We do put a lot of work into making a good show for you. Please, just click like and share. That's all we ask. Good morning and welcome back, folks. You're listening to Flaming Freedom live via the Liberty Radio Network. Some of you are listening to our downloaded podcast. And if you are, keep in mind that you can listen to us live next week via the Liberty Radio Network or via Ustream. Just go to flamingfreedom.com and look on the left side of the page. There's also stuff there if you want to find our our Facebook or Google Plus and things like that. So you can tune in through, through all that stuff as well. This is your host, Dale. And Dason. And Lauren. So... The wedding. Yes, the wedding. <laughs> that was awesome. It was beautiful. Like, I, I mean, it was very casual for for a wedding. It was casual, relaxed, um, and it was at a campground. It, it was, was a beautiful day, fortunately. And uh, I remember being worried that it was going to be hot, but it's northern New Hampshire. <laughs> so yeah, it was actually to, perfect. It was going up to northern New Hampshire too. Was a great prelude to Pork Fest which is coming up this right. week. Actually, it's starting today. I think that's part of why they did it. They scheduled it such that their honeymoon can be pork fest, I guess. That's a great and honeymoon. Then, and they're at the, the campground already, and a lot of people who arrive at pork fest early were able to just go ahead and attend the wedding and then stay for pork fest. So uh, it was a pretty good plan. Seems to work out pretty well. Mm. Yeah. Let's see what uh, some listener comments uh, are. We have a comments from a listener, Alan. I think Alan is also... Yes, Alan is the one we spoke to it was it last week or the week before about no, it was, it was last week he called in. Yeah. So, so he said, uh, I want to make a point of clarification, especially to Lelania. I think she was conflating monogamy with monosexual and they are not the same thing. I hold monosexuality to be abnormal, but it is just that abnormal monogamy. On the other hand is a Puritan plot to push its moral and social agenda. Yeah, I think, you know, we were all sort of using these terms and maybe they had different meanings for each individual person. I, I definitely recognize that. Monogamy specifically refers to a marriage. Like, just like polygamy refers to a marriage. It doesn't mean... See, he would be getting upset with you right now. Polyamorous is... Well, that's a technical because term. Because marriage that's what, is different than monogamy. Marriage implies that there's some legal thing. I don't think so. I think... At least that, in my mind it does. I'm pretty sure that uh, when you say polygamy or monogamy, you're referring to a type of marriage. Yeah, and can, some people so might then, people might conflate it with other kinds so of relationships. So birds can get married. Is well, that what you're saying? If you want to get technical, mono is uh, Greek, and so is gammy, meaning singular or one, and gammy is marriage. Right. I, it, so, it technically refers to marriage. I know I've used the term to talk about, like we say, animals being monogamous, but they're not actually getting married, obviously. But the high, mm -hmm. it's conflated well, with just it, relationships. Well, then monogamy but. isn't about marriage. Disproved. Technically, it is. Oh. Technically, it is. And we're, we're misusing the word to apply it to animals. It, that would be his word, maybe monosexual. Perhaps. If the, if the animals are only mating with one other. Then, they don't get married, so the word monogamy isn't really applicable. Mm -hmm. So that's just that's the technical. We're getting into semantics. But the traditional coming out processes, if you will, usually involves first identifying publicly as queer. At some point, the individual joins the community in one way or another and finds a mentor. At some point, the mentor or mentors becomes the parent, either by adopting or by being adopted de facto. In many ways, they replace the real quote unquote parents, not by plot, but by being able to first understand where the person's coming from. And second, by having frank and honest conversation about things that matter to the individual. The individual adopts or is adopted by others. Friends become brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles. A new voluntary family is formed. This is not because we don't love our biological parents, but rather because no matter how much we love them they cannot share with us in many cases they don't share our values they don't share a cultural reference point but, but they it, can and many times well not many times but it, i've seen it it ha it does happen right uh it does happen it's just uh but because it's it's just 
you, you kind of fall into those relationships as opposed to picking or uh, picking them because they suit you. Right. Right. Your parental relationships and stuff. I, I can understand I, where he's coming from. I think you can build a relationship, though. Oh, of course. Um, of course. Over time, I have great through, relationships. Through different mechanisms, whether it's like through joyful, loving reasons or for also for trauma bonding. I'm not like people can mm. go through really hard experiences together. My, and that's right. I think maybe that's what brought my dad and I together. I mean, like I have a very close relationship with him. Right. And, but I, that's a, just a very rare thing. Most people don't. Yeah. And so perhaps he's right in that sense. Okay. Um, um, and then, okay. So he goes on and he says, I, like, I have a good relationship with my mom, but not with my dad. Mm. Uh, well, my dad well, you're, passed, didn't, but yeah, but, uh, but, but important. the thing is I didn't really have a relationship with him. It wasn't like I, that I hated him or anything. I just didn't have a bond with him because he never really pursued that. I mean, he, he half assedly did, but it didn't really take. So I just, you know, when his funeral happened, I didn't cry. I didn't go. Mm. Just, there just wasn't anything. I didn't feel like there was much to, to mourn. I just, wow. And I honestly, of... funerals are pretty dead. I've gone to a couple and <laughs> it's that's, boring as hell. That's kind of the definition. <laughs> yeah. But again, I state monogamy is absolute evil. <laughs> absolutely evil. A Hitler comes along and lasts for a short time. He did tremendous amounts of evil with the sword. Puritans, however, who are smart enough to use the pen, place a concept deep in the society's consciousness, subconsciousness, or subconscious, and call evil good. Because there is no madman I, gassing people. I like, I people. like how he's oh, saying that society has some subconscious. Like there's one singular <laughs> subconscious of all of society, all of many, the, many different individuals. That's just, hmm. I don't know. I think the word is un collective unconscious, but... I, yeah, he's he is talking about societies having a it's subconscious. still really weird and kind of yeah, creepy only for individuals me. have a subconscious, but I think he means that a lot of people have it in their subconscious, right? Because there is no madman gassing people, evil concepts exist for longer and kill slash maim more people in the long run. This is a long post, by the way. We're almost done, though. <laughs> it is easy to calculate the evil of Hitler. There is a visible body count. How many men have killed themselves because of the values of monogamy and divorce? It happens. Uh, uh by the way, so. Uh, uh, suicide rates are, are fairly high in men, by the way, like significantly higher than in women. I don't know if that's because of divorce and stuff, but you can, you know, there's not necessarily a co correlation or is not causation necessarily and things like that. But the men do have high suicide rates. Um, how many, I don't know if that's related to what he's talking about though. How many queers have killed themselves for fear of being rejected by their family because they will never grow up and have a wife and kids like mom and dad? How many queers have turned to drugs or given up and want go out in a blaze of glory are stupid and get AIDS or are stupid and get AIDS. I think is what he means. How many kids are left feeling abandoned because one parent or the other is forced out of the home. And now there's only one parent who might leave them at any time. By the way, really smart people can get AIDS too. It's not about. Uh, True. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there's a lot you can do to really. I thought if you had a certain amount of intellect, then you were <laughs> immune to AIDS. <laughs> yeah. <know>? Yeah. I, <laughs> I, it just seems like kind of a hateful comment. Yeah. Not that I'm offended, just that it's kind of... Well, the biggest problem I'm seeing is it's talking about one thing, and then it starts to drift away to that, to where it's talking about something completely different and not necessarily mm. directly related to what the original message was. All right, let me finish up here. He says, uh, so I could go on, but you get my point. Monogamy and the values attached to it are pure evil. Monosexuals, on the other hand, I view exactly like I do leather or furries or drags. Everyone has their own kinks and kinks, and to each their own. So he's, you're being kinky if you're monogamous. <laughs> hmm. I, I I don't know if that works. It, just for just because technically it, kink refers to anything sort of outside the norm, what's considered the norm. It's 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 one of those contextual things. And if everyone starts being polyamorous, then it will be kinky to be monogamous or mon monosexual, rather, and or monoamorous, monoamorous, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, Where, but at the moment, it's it's hard hard to say it's kinky just because it's generally accepted. I think he should have used the phrase fetish rather than kink. It would have fit better. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Maybe. All right, right folks. Uh, stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to talk about. Why you, should, why you should invite your friends to Flaming Freedom Live at Porkfest coming up in just a weekend. This is your host, Dale, and we'll be right back. This is Flaming Freedom. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome back. You are listening to LGBT Libertarians Shooting the Poop on Flaming Freedom. This is your host, Dale. And Dason. And Lauren. And uh, here we are. Uh, there's... um. So much I was poop. looking. This my web page keeps being not updated right. I, I'm getting the weirdest behavior. 
It's a government right conspiracy. It, it is. They're, They're out trying to stop to... the message. That's right. I think that's it. I'm to off. dampen the flame. But uh, you should come to Flaming Freedom Live at Porkfest. We're going to be at an unusual time just because of the schedule at Porkfest. Normally we're here at Sundays from noon to 2. I'm not noon to 2. I'm doing it again from 10 until noon on Sunday mornings, Eastern Time. However, just during Pork Fest, we will be Saturday 11 to 1, and then that show will replay during our normal time on Sunday. That's how that usually works. I'm pretty sure that's what Ian's going to do. So so if you want to sh- meet the folks live at Pork Fest, come to the media room where all the other shows are, all the other live radio shows and things like that, from 10, from 11 until 1 on Saturday. That's this coming Saturday. And there'll be probably some hangover food for those of you who stayed up too late partying. And it sounds like there's a pretty awesome crowd, too. Of all the people oh, yeah. who have actually said like that they want to come to the, the live broadcast, there's a pretty cool group of people watching just there to see the show. So oh, yeah. Come you can and, meet all it'll kinds be a party. of cool people. It'll be a kind of party, so yeah. come and hang Although, out. Although, you know, Facebook, you never know. Like People say they're going somewhere, and maybe they don't. But yeah, well, yeah, like but it's a, it's, the people who say they're going to show up, show up. But then some people awesome. show up who didn't. Who didn't? Uh, and then there's RSV. that, yeah. So, uh, but it, yeah, if you can't, if you want, go ahead on Flame. Go ahead to the Facebook page and click on that you're going. It, it'll help us to know. And go ahead and share it with your friends. It's public. You can just let, t- just so they know about it. And you can also go to the Porkfest page, porkfest.com. They have a scheduling um, app. You can do it. You can create a login for free and click on things you want to go to, and it'll make your own personalized schedule. It's pretty cool. That's the new thing now with conferences. Is is, uh, you know, instead of a paper schedule that you just like underline things, you know, it's, it's so barbaric. Now you go <laughs> online and you can make a, a personalized schedule. So it's, it's perfect for making your plans and you can add us to it. So, um, Lauren's going to be upset. I think if we don't deal with Chase. This no, is I'm the not team. Be upset. I'm never upset. <laughs> no, I like to exaggerate your reactions to things. You know how I am. Okay, so <laughs> this is a gender nonconforming teen, and it's it's interesting the way this story goes. They never say, they never refer to, they never use female pronouns. No, they don't. And so, in a sense, and, he's being non-binary, as far as I can tell. He's not. He, I don't think maybe he will decide at some point. No, I want to go by female pronouns. I want to transition officially right. and all that. But but uh, I've actually been kind of combing Facebook because of that reason. I've been trying to figure out, like, hey, guys, does anybody know this person? And if they identify as female or male or what? And and I think that there's actually some <clears throat> excuse me, um, one woman who who said that he is not really trans. And I, I mean, trans is such a huge spectrum. Like, right. We're, it's we're a all spectrum. Little so trans. I'm going to say that he's he's. So, yeah. So that, that was that was pretty, a bad comment. Yeah. Um, but that was actually on, <clears throat> excuse me, Derek J's. Uh, He's a former co-host of this show. Yeah. Um, it was actually on his Facebook and there's this long, long thread about it. But I think this person might identify as he, but maybe that's just because maybe he has had a history and knows a lot of people and so doesn't want to like make the change. If, mm. if this person moved to another location, another town, then maybe they would start using female pronouns. It's, it's, a, I'm sure that's a rough process to, to go through when it's, it's, it's uncomfortable for a lot of people are so hung up on gender. And I'm sure that, you know, people can get uncomfortable when they're used to calling someone by certain pronouns and, and by a certain name, for instance, and all of a sudden you're saying, no, I want you to perceive me differently. I'm sure that's rough for people to go through, and, and it's particularly rough on the person, obviously. And so, yeah, who knows? Maybe it's very possible that it's just difficult, the, the, the pressure on this person to, to kind of keep doing things the way it's been done could be what's keeping, uh, keeping him from transitioning to uh to that or it could just be that he's non-binary it could he's be. he's like no i just Which like wearing makeup is... and and certain clothes that some people will call female clothes but but why does that even matter right, right? and if that's the case this person is so cool it's, and exactly. they're kind of a hero of mine either way that's true. either way uh, they're awesome and and we you know we, we should be throwing their, our support behind them and this and, so the, and also actual... this place is ridiculous uh, let's do you want to tell this, them what happened this place meaning anderson south carolina is that the place you're referring to yes okay this took place there um at the department of motor vehicles which we all love don't we <laughs> oh yeah oh I love, going, I love place. going to the dmv actually it's like going you know, to disney world except just the lines and not the rides <laughs> right yeah well they're actually not that bad in new hampshire they're they're pretty they're relatively short um and i don't know if that's a good thing or not but anyway uh the so this, 
anyway i'm 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 thinking about the dmv i'm just like having all this hatred (laughs) thoughts in my head and i'm trying to censor them i'm trying to focus okay so we're actually talking about uh, this this person i know i know i'm like uh, um so there's actually a dmv worker that refused to take this person's photo with makeup on and their hair down and just looking very feminine and and like a woman Uh. and it just seems ridiculous that they would even do that i mean there's people who grow beards specifically because they know they're going to go get their dmv photo there's right, people who right. wear eye patches there's people who wear uh, now the hat thing is different like and it depends on which state you're in as to whether or not you can hear, wear a hat but it has to be for religious purposes in most states but this just seems crazy like <laughs> it, why it is. would you do this it kind of blows my mind i'm not even kidding it, it, it blows my mind a little bit yeah it, the, the, it really the, seems the, like it would, would just be that individual say, your your appearance is not acceptable for this photo right and 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 it, just from a common sense point of view if you're doing a uh uh if, you, if, if you're, you're doing if you're doing a photo for your id and it, it theoretically you want to you want to look for the photo like you generally look right exactly right well some people mm-hmm. might not want to do that some people might have fun with a little experimentation which is something i might plan on doing and if you are a videographer out there and you're listening right now you should call me because we're going to do some fun stuff in about a month <laughs> cool um but anyhow yeah it just seems ridiculous it seems totally crazy and I, I'm actually going to be testing this out in New Hampshire, um, both with like state and federal IDs. Um, I'm going to try different gender presentations and using different names and things to see, <laughs> to see what they do. You should keep us updated. You should definitely because update our listeners. The whole because thing is just ridiculous. It is. It really is. Um, so anyhow, <laughs> so I guess we're, we're not really saying much more than this is pretty crazy, but it is. Yeah. It's like there's just, but it's actually kind of a great thing because there's a lot of trans people who are reading this and they're seeing that well he's entitled to be who he wants to be and that's express. a great photo he looks really happy and and like confident yeah. there yeah um i'm saying he by because i don't know i don't know any better well, all right the articles, and i haven't heard all anyone the refer to this person as a she and yeah, yeah and, uh, and everybody on facebook i've been talking to says he so yeah. it's it's i i, I, I want to say most... i will respect this his choice to change that but at the moment, that's all I know. So right, and and a lot of gender variant people are are like okay with just being called he or she or whatever, um, mm-hmm. be, except for it. Nobody, <laughs> nobody on the planet, even that person who claimed to be called it. Right, uh, you heard about that then? Yeah, Someone that it, said uh, they to, wanted to be called it. And I can't remember the the comedian that was doing the the thing that where they got all upset and said, "I demand to be called it." No, that that, that was, was a, bullshit. That was I a think. total troll. Someone made that total, shit up. Total troll. I, in fact, when I read it's it in the straw article, man. It's, it's, I didn't it's, even recognize that as real. Like, yeah. who would ever call themselves it? It's not. A, no. It's not real. It's exactly. totally a troll. No, I don't know. I've it's never. It's so heard dehumanizing. A... And if you ever call someone it, I mean, maybe you've made a mistake. That's fine. But if you're doing it on purpose, you're a dick. Of course. Exactly. Even in the Adams family, cousin It didn't even like to be called It. <laughs> I think that might be the one exception. Oh, that's the second okay Adams family of the it. night. <laughs> <laughs> if their name is It, I think you're allowed to call them It. But uh, otherwise, it's very tasteless and, and rude. All right. <laughs> um, but, so so it's, I think this is a great thing. There's a lot of trans people kind of looking out and saying, oh, wow, government interference. It, you know, because most people who are trans that I know are all like, oh, we need government to make it so that we have rights so that we can be protected oh, so that and it's yeah. it, you know there's a counter to that too you, you need to be careful when you're going in and trying to push legislation that's going to change the world I, absolutely and um i have been pleasantly surprised i am active on a trans forum and i've been, found quite a few that are libertarian in orientation some that are republican in orientation it's it's not quite as uh consistently predictable as you might think Hmm. There's a quite a lot of variation in political views amongst trans people as well. And uh, I think trans people are kind of ambassadors in a lot of ways for freedom. And we'll talk about that when we come back. You're listening to Flaming Freedom. Stick around. Welcome back, folks. You're listening to Flaming Freedom. This is your host, Dale. And Dason. And Lauren. I uh, want to mention briefly that Madrid is going to host World Pride 2017. I just found this out this week. And uh, we're going to have a link to it if you want to go check it out. Apparently, Spain is the most LGBT-friendly country. I, I wouldn't have necessarily guess that. What would you have guessed? Maybe it's because they have they have you know one of the coolest, most beautiful romance languages. So that they're there's they're just all about the love, and so they're cool with 
you know, gay love too? Well, I think it's because a lot of people fetishize the whole concept of the Latin lover. And, you know, now the Latin lover goes both ways. Well, it's not just about people's perceptions. I think they sort of tried to objectively measure how people in that country felt. You guys are talking about people's perceptions of Spain. Yeah, we're, this ca- is, we're kind this of talking is, about individuals here. This isn't what people think is the most accepting. This is what a, a, a rank, the rankings done as part of a 40 country survey. Hmm. As 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 on what is or is not considered morally acceptable, and mo- a, a, a pretty significant majority said that it was that considered homosexuality acceptable, and a fairly small, a very small percentage de- decreed it unacceptable. And everyone else was like, "Yeah, it's not a moral issue. It's just basically don't care. It's neutral. Yeah. No strong feelings." So, um, and they and they got judged a bunch of different countries. Uh, Germany was pretty good. The Czech Republic was pretty good. Uh, I wonder what some yeah. of the what the dominant religion in Spain is. I mean, are most people atheists? Are they, are I they think mostly Spaniards Cap- are Catholic? mostly Catholic? Yeah, I, that's, that's what I would think. Yeah, I think they're mostly Catholic, mm-hmm. which was, which is interesting. But that's you know, well, if you I've, want to find out more about World Pride, we'll have a link to it. Yeah, I've heard that the current Pope has said that gays aren't evil and should be prosecuted against. So that's something. And, and should or should not be prosecuted? Shouldn't be okay. I don't well, think he that he's saying that they're though. moral, that they'll be judged right. by God, but don't you judge them. Okay. That's it's progress for a pope of the Catholic Church. True. But uh but yeah, he's been kinda waffling. I don't know. He's he's he seems like a PR pope. A PR pope. I like that. I like the alliteration. Yeah. Well, unless you have to have three Ps. <laughs> <laughs> PR Pope. Yeah. yeah it's not quite there. Speaking of religion, <clears throat> I P and Popes. I have I, a Christian herpaderp that is unbelievable for my hometown. I've been slacking on the herp derps, on Christian herp derps. Does that mean that Christians are shaping up because they're listening to Flaming Freedom? No, honestly, I've been overwhelmed with them. I, I can't pick one. It's it's like, there's so many. I, I, I Each week, I feel like, God, which one of these? It's, there's so it's much. It's the Three Stooges effect. There's so many of them that they can't fit through the door. So nothing <laughs> comes through the door. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Kid in the candy uh, shop. The herp derps which have one been, do I get? The herp derps have been appalling, uh, and I, I just, I've just been, I, I, it's, it's, I can't even, I don't even know where to begin sometimes. Mm-hmm. So it's not for lack of being able well, to find. Well, them, fortunately, sure. we have one right here. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Mine. Okay. There's this couple in. My, now keep in mind, it starts out in what a world a where it's a small t- Mormon town, very small town. There was one street light when I was growing up. Okay. They got married. They were trying to conceive for. A little, I think it was a little over a year or a little under a year, but it was around one year. And they both got fertility tests, they both tested positive, and they just couldn't conceive. So they went to get a blessing from the bishop of their current church. And during the blessing afterwards, he was talking to him and he said, so how exactly are you guys trying to conceive? And it turns out what they've been doing since they've been married for around a year is he's been dumping his load in her belly button. Oh Wait. my lord! Wait. <laughs> how did they? How did this become public? How did they get out? This is embarrassing. Because some people say some crazy things. Well, maybe maybe the doctor thought spread. that like he really wants to educate other Mormons so that they can. Yeah, they can maybe. also learn how to do but, it. This is this is what happens when you don't talk to your kids about I, the birds and the bees. Jason, I I trust you. You're a pretty yeah. reliable guy when it comes to these stories because I've heard plenty of them and they're they're all pretty cool, um <laughs> and and mostly verifiable. But this one just sounds crazy. Yeah. There's no way. Like it's such a natural <laughs> act. So having sex with people is so natural. I mean, so maybe the person that you choose to have sex yeah. with isn't. But it just like it can just happen. I know. And I, obviously, when it just <laughs> when it just happens like that, there can be a rapey thing going on. There. My like, God! Don't like, let it just happen. Uh, but the Blue Lagoon, or yeah, what was that? I don't get what it. Was the, the, yeah. What this was is the not movie real. With, uh, I can't believe this. What was the movie where they were on the lagoon and they were little kids and they grew up together without any parents? Was it the Blue Lagoon? I don't know. I think it was the Blue Lagoon. This is old. This is like uh, it was classic though at the time. It was like this, you know, naughty because these little kids grow up together with no parental information. And they're like discovering the world and surviving on this island hmm. on their own without, any, you know, there's like a shipwreck and they're the only survivors yeah. and they're little kids at the time. They grow up together and they figured it out. <laughs> like they, they she got pregnant. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. They, 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 it was almost like, it was like, oops, it slipped in, you know? <laughs> and, <laughs> and there's a baby. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, they were living was, in sin. There was no sex ed class in the area. On top of that, these people avoided the very topic of sex, let alone watched porn or anything like that. And yeah, they ended up being married for almost a year or around a year and still hadn't consummated it. That's that's a derp. That's definitely a derp. <laughs> a Christian derp. <laughs> if I was the doctor, I would have just let it go. I would have been like, oh, yeah, well, keep trying. Just keep trying. You'll get it someday. Don't worry. <sighs> yeah. If you can't figure it out, you're not meant to reproduce. <laughs> yeah, really. Please, please. I, I kind of like, uh. I kind of don't want to correct them. I don't, I kind of like, nope, keep, uh, get, just keep fertilizing that belly button. You know, and uh, if it's meant to be, it'll be, you know, there'll be a, there'll be a Christian miracle and you'll have a baby yep. and maybe the Lord will be the daddy. I don't know. I just don't. How did they find it out? <laughs> like, did the doctor say, like, walk through the steps and say, like, okay, and then what did you do? And then how did it go? And then where did you touch? And then uh, like, no, how, like, well, how see, did they that, figure this the, out? I think the doctor probably assumed they'd already figured that much out, like where to put it. This is ridiculous. Well, it Where do you put your wiener? This is totally ridiculous. Who found out oh, it was, it was the priest, right? Bishop. Yeah. The bishop. The bishop. Oh, it was yeah. the bishop. Oh. Yeah, and I don't know how the conversation went after he found out. <laughs> but, how, where do you go from there? Like, how, I wonder if you like, uh, if you could excuse me for just a moment. He steps out and shuts the door, and you hear this like riotous laughter, <laughs> like muffled on the other side of the door. <laughs> yeah, but. Oh. <laughs> Please tell your kids about sex. <laughs> and don't just tell them clinically. Like, we were talking about sex ed and how clinical it is. My sex ed, I think they did, like, at some point say, yes, you put the penis in the vagina. They kind of did. They covered that. But, like, most of it was, like, talking about the science of, like, sperms and doing, and it was totally non-sexual. Right? That part is not, that's just, that's just the stuff that happens. Well, speak for you yourself. You obviously have to know. I love the science of it. <laughs> I, it was fascinating. Don't get me wrong. I was fascinated. But it didn't feel like I was being educated in a useful way about sexual interactions with other people, right? This, this is like, this is what your sperm is going to do. My sperm already knows how to do that. It, you know, uh, this is what your sperm is going to do. And then here's the egg and then it breaks the, the wall of the egg and then no more sperm can get in, you know, all that crap and the chromosomes and X, Y, X, X, X and X, Y and all that stuff. I'm like, it's all fascinating. But, uh, you know, what I do after the prom, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Help me out with that part. They don't do that. No, nope. it's not acceptable. What did everyone do after their prom? <laughs> Get we drunk can all... and then try and play. I Where's didn't. the? I didn't do the prom. So. See, the word "try" is always in there. No, I don't think those stories are as, as accurate well, as we. They think typically they are. get drunk, and that can lead to erectile dysfunction. On top of that, <laughs> clumsiness and yeah, you know. But right. your standards go down, so that helps probably some. Kind of, sort of, it sort of compensates a little bit in the other direction. Like on the one hand, you might have a harder time getting an erection. On on the other hand, like she's more attractive and he's more attractive. Or it's such an awkward goggles. environment because it's this, it's like you spend your entire like twelve years just never ever you know the girls and the boys are always separate though you just can't have any relations with each other because that's not cool. You can't if you're a boy yeah. you can't be with the girls and if you're a girl you can't be with the boys. No, no, it's not okay. And then suddenly they put you all together and they. They send you to this dance, and it's, and it's very like formal, an alien and you have creature. to follow some kind of ritual. <laughs> yep, there's even yeah, tribal dancing. No shit, people don't get laid. Right, <laughs> exactly. Because it's so awkward. Like, go on a date, get to know someone, go out and like drive around, go watch the sunrise. It's like, really do unfortunate. That kind of stuff. You know, That's a, what's going to get you laid. It's unfortunate not going that, to prom. That, that if you're young a high people... schooler, do not go to prom to get laid, please. Right. It's unfortunate that young people don't get more relationship building opportunities or just interacting with people other than the same gender well and stuff if like you're that. a lesbian or gay then hey if that it works and, fine and the thing is and as we become more accepting of that we'll, we'll tend to know that sooner we've got more and more often people coming out at 12 and 13 and stuff like that i knew at 13 i they clicked and i was absolutely clear on being gay when i was 13 but i didn't come out for many years later in my in my world at my at that time it was not done. It was very rare. Um, and you might get beat up, uh, very possibly. All right, folks, um, stay tuned. We're going to talk about angry feminists when we come back. Oh, dear. A great blog post here. This is uh, Flaming Freedom, LGBT Libertarian Shooting the Poop. We've got a few minutes, and then we'll be back. Happy Sunday, and welcome to the Church of Flaming Freedom. 
Hallelujah, <laughs> brother. <laughs> For LGBT libertarians, shoot the poop. Whew. Sometimes it breaks just are never just, long enough. Did you just shoot the poop? Is that why? Is that why <laughs> you said that? We won't go that? into that. Oh, okay. We won't go into that. You know, I was thinking about oh, right, it. On, on that note, that though. On, on the air, right? On, on, while we're talking, getting all scatological and everything, uh, it occurred to me that we've actually lost a couple of likes on Facebook, and we should be getting more and more likes. I know. And I was thinking about that, and I was like, you know what? I think our problem is we haven't... I had to run upstairs. Wow, that, was a, good, that was a good poop. I think our problem is... <laughs> I think our problem is not talking about bestiality enough. Right? Oh, obviously. So I'm yeah, going to remedy obviously. that today. <laughs> so does this tie in with feminism or? It should, but no. Oh, we'll okay. get to that. You we'll left us that. with, you know, saying we were going to talk about feminism and how it's a hate movement, but then you're like bestiality. But you had an epiphany. We are. I mentioned that I touched on this article a little bit last week, I believe, oh. when I suggested that people look at feminist articles, like someone, and then replace anywhere where it says men with Jews, mm -hmm. and then read it again, and if it sounds like a Nazi, then that's a feminazi. <laughs> uh, I know people don't like it, you know, that word being used, but I don't, I don't think it's too strong in some cases, so it doesn't apply to everyone, obviously, but uh, it's, it's a thing. So, um, so someone, someone asked why, they, they asked this person, 23 Claw, I guess, is on Tumblr, well, can I ask why you say feminism is a hate movement? And uh, she says, yes, there are a lot of people spouting hatred, but we can't change the actual movement of feminism as a woman's rights movement just because some people take it too far. People always do that. There are some Muslims who are terrorists. This is the question, by the way. There are some Muslims who are terrorists, but Islam isn't a hate movement. I would agree with that. The people who use something to further their own hatred shouldn't sully the movement itself. And she says... Feminism is a hateful ideology that demonizes and scapegoats men in order to acquire political, public, and financial support for itself. That's a pretty hateful statement by itself. All branches of feminism are rooted in patriarchy theory, an almost entirely unfounded conspiracy theory which essentially claims that for all known human history and in all known human societies, all men, regardless of circumstance, were priv privileged oppressors high-fiving each other and twirling their mustaches while all women, regardless of circumstance, were innocent, helpless, oppressed victims. And uh, we've all seen that though, right? Yeah. The guys twirling their mustaches yeah. and being like, oh, Mom, you silly right. ladies, right? So, um, and then and, and that's where it's it's suggested, especially if you take a brand, they, they suggest Jezebel in particular for going and doing the word replacement. Jezebel's, I've seen a lot of stuff on that site. That's that's uh, I, I'm still stunned that 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 site exists and is is considered somewhat mainstream, but. Uh, and the other thing you can do is put black in front of any statement about men. So instead of just reading men, if you put black in front of it, then see how it reads then is another way to tell. Uh, <clears throat> so, and then they make comparisons between the term, they talk about the term feminazi, which upsets some people, understandably. And then, uh, and they, that's, that some people refer to as being, a or, or for referring to man-hating radical feminists. And they think it hyperbole, and under, understandably. But they say, the, uh, and then they point out some similarities. And they say, amongst other things, femino feminism and Nazism have both discriminated against individuals on the basis of their genetic code, promoted the view that the targeted group was inferior genetically and behaviorally, pr promoted propaganda that led to the targeted group being laughed at even when mutilated, things like Bobbit jokes, <clears throat> Uh, demonized the target group by labeling them as perverts and sexual criminals. It's still, uh, by the way, many planes will not let a man sit next to a child on the plane. You know, you, you mentioned the genetics. Yeah. Or I, if, if I may, may I? Yeah, absolutely. Right. So I think that men and women are actually way more similar than they think they are. And I know like that there's this idea like, oh, well, one of the chromosomes is a Y and not an X and it's split and it's unzippered or it's weird and, <laughs> and it's mutated and there's a, it's a huge change and it's totally different. But no, men and women are very similar. And I want a geneticist to go through and, and actually look at, um, the, I, and I'm, not, I'm really kind of failing here at my, at my genetics knowledge, but looking at all the different types of, uh, of chemical bonds and, the structure of the DNA of the Y chromosome and see if there's some parallels to the X chromosome because there's going to be plenty, I'm sure. And, okay. and really look yeah. at it. Genetically, we're, we're not that different. Physically, we're not that different. I know that the people are like, well, there's a huge difference. Like, if men get in a fight and women get in a fight, whatever. That, like, <laughs> people suck at fighting, first of all. <laughs> so, 
we're very similar. There are way more similarities. We're like we're like ninety ninety eight percent the same. Mm. Mm. So that's think, what we need to look at. And, okay, I don't think feminists do that, but yeah, I hear you. <laughs> no, fem, well, feminists um, are sure. No, most feminists don't. Most feminists actually aren't that bad. I know that there's this huge movement of like, oh, we hate feminism, but just be nice to the feminists, and then maybe they'll be I, nice I'm, I'm going to link another video that I just watched today on YouTube where a guy talks about that. He says the difference between, for instance, uh, you, when you talk about a philosophy, there are, there's the general views in that philosophy, and then, and then there's, a t- there's a tactic to sort of dismiss any criticism and say, well, they're not all like that, right? There's the, um, the nay fault or nay walt. Uh, or sorry, yeah, nay fault, which is not all feminists are like that, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And they sort of dismiss, dismiss criticism. But there's a difference, for instance, between if you look again at mainstream, at what is, even if you, you uh, versus you can take individuals and say, yeah, that individual is different. But what does the mainstream do to an individual who goes and speaks up, for instance, and says that, hey, you're, this is a hateful article? Uh, and then, and, and look at what happens and the difference between that, for instance. And if you look at some of the mainstream men's rights activism movements, if someone comes in there and expresses misogyny, they will usually be banned, kicked off their comment. You know, they'll, they'll be moderated in yeah, some way. Yeah, for the most part. Because they're like, we don't want you to represent our movement. Right. And that, that does not happen in the other direction. In, General, in generally the, w- speaking. When you say the other, other direction, are you saying the feminist. MRA or the feminists? Feminists. Okay. Right. And then the last thing here says promoted the view that the targeted group was responsible for most of the major ills in society. So, and th- I think this is, uh, what this is getting down to is, is, Again, there's this, the notion of patriarchy, which is there's, yeah, men have sort of been expected, have carried more of the responsibility, which also included, for instance, being in leadership roles, a fraction of the men, really, in leadership roles, most of them not, but, um, and then the idea that they've, that the whole point of that is to exploit women for their own advantage, and that has, that's just simply not the case, historically, if you look at it, again, looking at the difference between, like, when someone has more rights that go along with having that extra responsibility, like the responsibility, for instance, of being drafted and going and dying to protect other people, women and children, and and things like those sorts of expectations. And then along with that is, yeah, they they tend to be in positions of power more, but but always along with this idea that part of that part of what that responsibility entails is protecting women and children. Well, you know, so I like not exploiting. To put it into two different categories, not good or bad, but positive and negative feminism. Positive feminism is whenever some feminist is talking about a legitimate issue that women suffer through. Negative feminism is when they're not talking about their issue and they're more talking about attacking the other sex. And I feel the same towards men's rights activists. Anytime a man is saying, I have to put up with this type of negative behavior, and it's not right, that's fine. That's positive. It's getting the information out. But anytime somebody's like, well, I have to put up with this negative thing, so therefore, since women aren't putting up with this, they're the evil ones, they're causing it, and very few of these women are probably oppressing men, and very few of these men are probably oppressing women. They're both victims in this societal game that says we're not we're different we can't like each other we can't get along because one of us has to fail for the other to succeed and regardless of whether you're saying it's a man that needs to fail or a woman you're still propagating the idea that it's a win-lose game i think that if people actually go and look at the mainstream voices for the different movements uh, you know feminism is a more the men's rights movement is a little more recent a little more getting attention recently at least it may have been around for a long longer than that um, I've only started paying attention to it relatively recently. If you look at the, so it's smaller, it's not that hard to find the voices of the movement. <laughs> you can go to something like a voice for men, for instance. Um, there's a conference happening in Detroit right now. You can look at like the leaders of the movement and what they're saying, and you can look at their behavior, and then you can look at the behavior of, and, and, and I think a key difference, if you hear, you'll hear feminists talking about men, you'll hear a voice for men and people like that talking specifically about feminists, not women in general. This is, this is Flaming Freedom. We'll be back in a moment. Stay tuned. And we are back. Thank you for being patient during, uh, well, for a few words from our sponsors. We are live via the Liberty Radio Network. This is your host, Dale. And Dason. And Lauren. On Flaming Freedom, where LGBT libertarians shoot the poop. And we were just talking about really addressing the idea of feminism as a hate movement, which has come up on the show before. I really, I'm talking about this particular article that I liked, uh, 
last week I, I sort of touched on it where I mentioned that a suggestion on here is to take any particular article on Jezebel, for instance, which is a popular feminist site, and replace anywhere they say men with Jews, and then read the article again. And if it sounds like a Nazi, then... There you go. So now I like what you're saying, Jason. It's a good thing to point out. Um, I feel like I'm pointing it out over and over again. And to some point, it feels kind of uh, redundant. But you're right. Not all feminists are like that. It's true. Mm-hmm. And uh, and but the the movement as a whole and their key. It, it, for instance, if you're talking to a particular woman who says I am a feminist, and I would say if she's not like that, then find out if she debunks patriarchy theory, for instance, and not just that men have been in charge because that is conceded. I, I think it's obvious that most of a lot of leadership positions, CEOs, uh, senators, and and such are male, and then that's that's clear. But the idea that goes with that is that they they've taken that power and they're using that power to exploit for their own benefit. Mm-hmm. Women and ch- women and maybe children, I guess, probably not. But <laughs> the idea that women that they're keeping women is subjected for their own benefit. When I feel like um, th- th- that's not the evidence isn't there for that. The evidence is that men primarily feel responsible for protecting, providing for. Uh, and and taking care of women is sort of the idea, and that's condescending. There's disrespect there, but there's not rampant misogyny. I think there's a big difference between saying they're misogynists versus they don't respect and treat as an adult. They infantilize women, mm-hmm. and they feel like it's my responsibility to take care of, provide for, and if if necessary, sacrifice myself for. Uh, that their lives are more important than mine, and and if you don't if you don't see that with it. Then you just and you look at it very myopically, very with tunnel tunnel vision. Then you're going to see misogyny and oppression, and it takes it takes that kind of tunnel vision though to come to that conclusion. Again, on a widespread notion, that's not to say there's not discrimination happening. It's not to say that a, any particular uh, business owner, for instance, is not a misogynist and is not going to discriminate against women. But to uh, but to show evidence of like that happening on a on a wide scale, the evidence is is flimsy at best. Right. If you look at things like the wage gap, that's been debunked. Um, and if you look at, for instance, uh, a lot of the new, a lot of data coming out about domestic violence and rape and how it's not nearly as gendered as we thought it was, but that evidence keeps getting skewed by some mainstream feminists and things like that. Then, then there's that. But now, what you're pointing out is there are definitely there are feminists. I know some of them that that don't seem bad. Obviously, mm-hmm. <laughs> they have good intentions, certainly. But. Uh, and what happens to those feminists if they speak up against people who are who are part of the hate movement? And that's that's I think what's telling. There's if you go, for instance, to say uh, a site like Jezebel and speak out against the mainstream viewpoint, there's a hate movement. Then you get shot down. Whereas if you're on a men's rights, there aren't very many men's rights uh, organizations that are actually organized. Again, you can take any particular person and say, yeah, that person's a misogynist. But if that person speaks up on like a voice for men in the comments, he will be shot down by everybody else. That won't be accepted. Mm-hmm. And they are specifically critical of the philosophy of feminism. They're not criticizing women as a whole. They're criticizing that philosophy, which is being, again, being exposed, in my opinion, as a hate movement. Yes. So, so that's my thought. are we going to move on from feminism yeah, to veganism and Yes. What was Why the other part? Vegan? Bestiality or something? Where, yeah, yeah. where are you taking us now? Well, I, I don't. I don't want to pry my listeners. I think they're upset because we haven't been well, talking about bestiality money. enough. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we need more. And, we uh, need so much exactly, more. Exactly. Exactly. A popular request. Right. So there was this. All right, there was this. There was this video called. Uh, I think I know why that is. By the way. What? It's because Dale. Uh, I'm sorry. No offense. Uh, it's because Neil isn't here. I feel like the goat sex, oh. all that stuff. It was. We're, we're really missing that. The bestiality component was definitely <laughs> run by Neil. Do you know what? You know what? I've got some great sound bites for, about goat sex. <laughs> they ended up I in one of our do. short videos. Oh, oh, about about goat sex. Yeah, okay. there's right. a, one I, of I our thought videos. you were saying you had great goat sex. Clips. No, I haven't. But there's oh, okay. a video where we talk about goat sex for money or something like that. And we were doing a would you rather thing. There's this list of would oh, you rather. Those are fun. And it was a lot of fun. Yeah, we were, he, Neil and I were answering it, and and uh, it's, frankly, some of Neil's answers were shocking when it came down to like goat sex. What would it take? For you to have, would you rather um, have like uh, something about like okay you have goat sex in private under certain conditions and the other condition is you have it in oh no I remember it now it was do you actually have sex with a, would you rather actually have sex with a goat in private no one finds out about it or would you rather people think you had sex with a goat but didn't actually do it <laughs> huh. and uh, and I think that's what got us to like that's a good one that's how we came to numbers like okay how much to have sex with a goat privately and how much to have sex with a goat publicly and i think those are very different numbers 
right? Because all the taboo associated with it. Like if you pay me enough and it's and no one's ever going to find out about it, I'm like, eh, oh, maybe. But if you want, like, if you want it on YouTube, <laughs> I would be okay with that as long as the goat was consenting. If the goat right. was like, "Hey," well, that's a, that's a, I'm glad you brought that up because that kind of leads into the next uh, segment where I uh, there's a source fed video uh, that says bestiality is still legal question mark exclamation point and apparently New Jersey is just now getting around to making bestiality illegal and they're shocked at this like oh my god there's places where it's still legal actually there's several states where it is still legal and there's even like a, even animal brothels were legal in. Washington State. I don't know if that changed why since are, the last time we talked about it. Why are they wasting their time? Why uh, are they writing this law? Like I'm with you. This is a ugh, not just wasting right. time, but why are you I criminalizing people? I'm, I'm not pro bestiality personally, but <laughs> right. Well, don't write this law. Who please? hasn't fantasized about going to a heavy <laughs> petting zoo? Uh, that would be me. Okay, <laughs> I have not fantasized. Whatever you just you described. and Neil could. I really you need to be here when yeah, Neil is here. Yeah. I'm trying to get him here today. I don't know. I'm hoping, he's gonna make I'm hoping it. he'll come and take Lauren, my chair. You know, Lauren has to leave a little early. You're going to lure him in with here. talk yeah. of bestiality. Yeah. Uh, so he is not going to join us today, I just I mean, found out, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, so uh, this is the whole thing. It's not just about wasting time. It's about actually criminalizing people for something that... And, and uh, here's my thing. We eat animals. We kill them and eat them. And now someone's worried that you're diddling them. And I'm like, it just feels really disproportionate. <laughs> There's obviously a whole bunch of personal weird taboo stuff about that that has nothing to do with something we should actually be legislating. Like, that's gross to me. There's a whole bunch of things that are gross to me that I don't want to make illegal. And so I actually argued with people in the comments of this video. And... I I, uh, I have to admit, I had a lot of fun with it. So I, I was just thinking how much more fun my life is because of crazy vegans. So on a certain level, I kind of like vegans. <laughs> I mean, like, I wouldn't... I w they're so much fun to troll because... And, and then that leads into the... Because uh, I was saying, hold on, you're killing and eating these animals, but you don't want to diddle them. Like, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, we're acknowledging that they don't have rights when we kill them and eat them. We acknowledge that they don't have rights. Uh, as a society, we do not recognize them as having rights. And you might disagree with that. You might be a vegan who says we shouldn't be eating them and we definitely shouldn't be diddling them either. And like, okay, but you're not going to get your way. You're not, the, the laws are not going to change. Society does not agree with you that animals have rights. Otherwise, we would not be able to eat them. And so you're being ridiculous. <laughs> well, what if it's consensual? Like if the dog starts humping <laughs> your leg first and it's like, okay, well, this is... An obvious sign. So. Right, right, right. Yeah, that all, the, all that cool. stuff got into. We got into the notion of whether animals consent. consent. So we'll talk about that when we come back. Thank you for bringing it up, Dason. Uh, this is Dale. And Dason. And Lauren. Stay tuned. LGBT libertarians shooting the poop on Flaming Freedom here on the Liberty Radio Network. We'll be right back. You folks missed it during the break, but Dason has promised to stick his finger in a dike if necessary to save us all. Well, I, so I would do it as well. If we, there was a leaky we dike and we were all about together. to be destroyed in a flood of, of whatever, then... Liquid. And if you are a listener and you are a leaky dike, you can talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren is a fan of the leaky dikes. You are listening to Flaming Freedom, and I apologize in advance. Send your hate mail to dale at flamingfreedom.com. You can also post comments on today's show page and tell us how awful we are and how we need to stop talking about bestiality at flamingfreedom.com. There's a, it's very easy to post comments. You don't have to register. There's a real, real simple uh, thing to keep bots from p posting. But it's simple and straightforward and not tedious at all. But if you want to register, you can. And then you'll have a username all to yourself. And it makes it easier and stuff like that. You can also post on uh, Facebook. We encourage that as well. I highly encourage you to click like and share on our Facebook posts. Because that's how more people see us. Facebook has been throttling down on all that stuff. So help us out. Uh, we need that more than we need donations at the moment, although you can donate as well at flamingfreedom.com. Then let's go on. So, so all that we're talk talking about, about vegans. Yeah. Oh, right. No, I thought we were actually moving on to our little trolling segment since we were talking about all of the fingering of dykes and such, which is actually not a troll on my part. <laughs> well, I was going to talk ladies. about, okay, how did I end the show? How did I end the segment? I believe I said... You said when trolling is appropriate or what was I saying? No, no, no. You were still Remind talking me. about um, why you love vegans. I thought we were and talking about right, it was so entertaining. Love, I love vegan dykes, uh, by the way. Here's the thing. Here's I, and that leads into we were talking about consent actually. This, 
We we yeah. this leads into my next topic, which is about that that too. We're going to talk about whether animals can consent, but it leads into another thing I was going to talk about, which is. When is trolling appropriate? And when someone makes an emotional argument, you can clearly tell that they're emotionally invested in something and their logical arguments for it are seriously incongruous and inconsistent. Then when they're being really emotional, at that point, I just want to push their buttons because they're, uh, I don't know, you can't have a logical discussion with someone who's having emotional or who's making an emotional argument. I usually so at that point, I think it's completely appropriate to start trolling the crap out of them. Go ahead. What? No, it's not. Yeah, it's. it's I, think I it's, like to give them a hug and say, "No, it's okay. <laughs> You're gonna be all right. That's You'll get gonna, over this." That's never gonna get a vegan to get over their hang up on guilt trips over cute little animals and all that stuff. No, you just vegans need are great. To, I love when they're, when they're trying, their only way, the only argument for getting other people to be vegan is like, "Oh, you shouldn't eat the cute little animals. They're so cute, and you're an evil person, and it's ridiculous, and you should troll them." And that's when, like, last, last when Jason Robertson was on, and he said, oh, have you ever tried horse meat? Horse meat's really good. <laughs> I will. Actually, I'm not, I wasn't kidding, though. I would eat horse meat. I mean, you know. Just, I bet it's very low-fat low, low fat content. It's, I bet it's, it's, I bet it's pretty good for apparently you. Apparently, it's sweet. It's Ooh, a little sweet. I could see that. Well, so whether an animal can consent or not. Oh, what were you going to say, Jason? Well, I was going to say that maybe what Lauren's doing is a form of trolling. It's like, I'm going to hug you and tell you it's going to be okay. <laughs> it's so condescending, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. That <laughs> no, could be trolling. I like really Ian, care. It's like, Ethan. don't tell me. I care that gonna, much. I'm not going to be okay. Yeah. I'm already okay. What are you talking about, you troll? Yeah. So when Ian know. offers to hug the the uh, all the bureaucrats and things, <laughs> it's, it's so condescending. It's it's clearly like, oh, you're you're, you're so clearly wrong. And you're that way because you're just an uh, unloved, hateful person. But I will give you a hug. It's so condescending. Well, it's right. Probably <laughs> but we're really happy to be on LRN. People don't know who I'm talking about, but uh, <laughs> you just got to take my word for it. Uh, <laughs> um, this is someone who we love dearly. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, I think uh, I, I don't think like we I, I don't know. If ve- do you think vegans need hugs? Is that it? I think I they're getting know. plenty of hugs from. Can they consent uh, can't. to somebody trolling them? <laughs> so animal consent. This whole idea that an animal can't consent to sex, I don't know why people say that. My, I've had pets, and I've never tried to have sex with them. And I, <laughs> I'm not going to have sex with them. But the things I do to them, I pet them and things like that, or feed them. I do, I, you know, I know whether they're consenting to it or not. They're pretty good at communicating with non-verbal cues. Yeah, it would have been right? great if we had some... Nah, he, Good old eighties porno music going there. It's like, yeah, yeah I've got pits. <laughs> I got a cat. And I pet them and wow, I wow. hold them, and I know what they like. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you know, uh, some people will think that I'm trolling when I defend bestiality or defend the idea of it not becoming illegal. Okay, they will think I'm trolling. I'm really not. I just I don't want to make a new law for this. There's already animal cruelty laws. It's there you go. We're done. Uh, if, if, if you but demonstrate animal cruelty, I think there should be I, I, I'm a libertarian. And I think before you lock someone up or punish them in any kind of severe way, you need to have us. You need the burden of proof needs to be re- substantial. Yeah. Well, right. There's there's a there's a reason why we have law uh, laws that say you're innocent until proven guilty and things like that. And if you want to say, oh, they're you, you know, bestiality is all about making it. So if you do anything at all that someone might construe as bestiality. You're not even going to get into whether you were actually cruel to the animal, whether the animal, whatever. I, it's, 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 there's already animal, animal cruelty laws. We're done. Well, we don't need new laws for this. Let's look at it this way. What if it's another species, but it's sentient? Like a lot of people believe dolphins are sentient. Right. And and they're I'm horny them, as so. shit. They rape people. Hey, if you <laughs> end up being around a dolphin and they, it seems interested, is it okay? Yeah. Cause they're not, mindless creatures so right well uh-huh. there was that thing there was that thing that came out recently i'll try to find it so i can link it in the show prep if i remember uh someone try to remind me leave a comment if i forget to link it but i can find it if you tell me about it there's a lady who was doing a study on dolphin language and he was trying to communicate with dolphins this was several decades ago i believe and she was given the dolphin hand jobs because the dolphin didn't want to participate until she gave him hand jobs he was incredibly horny well mm-hmm. people don't realize that dolphins have testicles the size of cucumbers they're internal 
and they have a, a capillary system to to cool off their testicles. They're in the water, so and then there's blood vessels that are connected to the testicles that lead to capillaries in their skin and their stomach. So their stomach gets red and warm when they're horny, and that's to cool down their testicles, which are like these gigantic nuclear furnaces of sperm <laughs> production, right? So they're horny bastards, and they have been known to rape people, to molest people, to rub up against people. And uh, this dolphin would not cooperate with this study that they were trying to do until it got hand jobs. She would have to. She was like, "Yeah, I just did it because then it would finally come down and it would do what we wanted." And it was absolutely like sitting there and letting her do give it hand jobs. It was consenting. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. And should she go to jail for that? Oh, fucking kid! You kidding me? Come on. The, it, it, she was not. There was no animal cruelty there. Okay. So <laughs> she didn't want to do it. She was just like, "Okay, we've got. We're trying to do a study. This animal's super horny. It won't calm down." She gave a hand job. Well, the best question though <laughs> is, would you give a dolphin a hand job if they seemed interested? Uh, I I don't think I would be comfortable with no, that. I, I wouldn't be. Okay Here's with the thing: that. I wouldn't give dolphins, people that hand jobs if if they're interested. I think humans are much less into bestiality than a lot of animals are. Like the hum animals are totally okay with doing it with humans more so than we are with them. In general, I think. Interesting. So, I, you know, but if you want dolphins anyway, oh my God. <laughs> so, yeah. There's there actually a, another podcast that I'm associated with. Um, there's actually an entire episode called Dolphins Are A Holes. <laughs> yes. I'm, yes. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, SLA, Sex, I, Lies, and Anarchy. Yeah. But yeah, I we think have, have an episode that called that Dolphins episode. Are Assholes. They, they kind of are. A lot of people have this notion of them as these pristine, per well, pristine is the wrong word. Uh, these super peaceful, loving, progressive, emotionally creatures, and they, they really are assholes to each other. They could be assholes. So they form little cliques. Mm -hmm. uh, the males form cliques and kick other males out and even hurt each other, and they're, they can be violent to each other. A lot of people don't realize they're, they're not these perfect little creatures that are... I, I, a lot of people, especially vegans, sorry, vegans, not really. Uh, so uh, have this notion of humans as being the one flawed animal on the planet. And all the other animals are living in peace and harmony. And no, they're killing each other like crazy. They're violent. Uh, humans are the ones who think about it and actually have a moral notion of this stuff, which is good. We should be thinking about this stuff and, and, and exploring it. That's, that's our nature as humans. But the other animals aren't doing that. We're the only ones doing it. So quit, quit acting like we're the evil on the planet and not every other creature on the planet. Well, oh God, fucking oh. mosquitoes and fleas and ticks. So and, we're coming up on the next segment, uh, and I'm a little bummed out because I was really looking forward to that Game of Thrones porn and the, oh, uh, the right. Dutch village. But we're going to talk about bears having oral sex, but, but only, briefly. Get going. only briefly. It's been really, it's been a pleasure. All Thanks, right. guys, for having me. All right. Thanks, folks. Stick around for a few minutes. We're going to be right back bye for bye. our last segment. Thanks for sticking around right up to the last segment of the show. There's still time for you to tune in if you like. You can actually, or you're tuned in, presumably, but you can actually join the show via Skype. I've been forgetting to mention this. You can uh, get on Skype and contact us via In Your Head Shows. That's the account, In Your Head Shows. Just type that in with no spaces as your contact, and uh, we can hear what you have to say about this stuff. Uh, some of you might be upset. We're talking about eating horses and, and screwing goats. So... I don't know why you'd be upset about all that, but sometimes you might. So, there you go. But yeah, I do feel like people are, we've lost a couple likes recently, and I think it's because we're not talking about bestiality enough. That's, that's my evalu that's my intelligent evaluation of the situation. So. Also, on the, on the, on that note, um, I'm gonna link it. We're not gonna talk about it much. There's not a whole lot to talk about, but bears have apparently been having oral sex. Which I guess a lot of people are like, oh my god, are animals having sex for pleasure? Like, why else would they do it? Do you think an animal's like, I want to get pregnant? <laughs> I want to make that other animal pregnant. No, they're just instinctually doing what is pleasurable for them. It just blows my mind. Oh, animals don't have sex for pleasure, only humans do. That was another argument mm -hmm. in that whole thread on the, on the YouTube video that I linked. Like, no, they're only doing it for pleasure. They don't know they're doing it to reproduce. That's just what happens when they do it. I, I've seen uh, bears masturbate on top right into the side. You're not talking. I, I've, I've, you, seen, you yeah. I've seen I've uh, seen bears masturbate Better. on on uh, network television a number of times. I yeah yeah absolutely. I, I forgot to mention. I forgot to introduce Ben. By the way, hi, I'm Ben. Uh, and yeah, I've never been on radio or anything, but hi. Thanks and, for being. Thanks for joining us. I think Dason, you're a friend of Dason's, right? Yeah. Cool. 
and Dason brought you along. That's by the way, at the beginning of the show, there's a little bit of bumpiness. That was because people, were, um, there was some confusion here and people were coming in just as the show was starting. Uh, so there you go. We're very professional here. All right. <laughs> just want to say hey, hey to all ladies. Yeah. Uh, ben is another, just like Dason, we got another token heterosexual on the show. I have so many now. I don't know if I can call you guys token anymore. Well, we're so many. I, it's at this point we're I'm, we're going to lose our street cred as a gay show because I have so many straight guys on. Well, I'm actually and, more hetero flexible yeah. than heterosexual. You okay, know? you need to talk right into the center of your microphone too. You're talking into the tip. Okay, sorry there you go. about Perfect. that. That's better. So uh, yeah, bears like oral shocker, and I and I don't mean chunky chunky leathermen. I mean uh, actual animals. Bears. Game of Thrones is coming out with a porn. I think this is brilliant. <laughs> There's going to be a, a Game of Thrones porn, and I think it, it's gay. I'm pretty sure it's gay. That should be interesting. I will link to that so you can read more about it. There's not a whole lot to say about that other than it's cool. Go check it out. <laughs> uh, although some people, I, I understand people who say they don't like porn that has plots. Because for one thing, they never have good actors. So whenever they're trying to do a, an actual story, it just sounds pathetic. Like you get real actors who won't have sex or... Have actors who will have sex, but they suck as actors. It's one or the other, usually. Yeah. <laughs> so kind of fast forward type of deal. Yeah. Well, I'm and then there's of... also Gay of Thrones, which I will link to, which is a great compliment to Game of Thrones. There's like a gay hairdresser who, who comments to all of his clients about the latest episode, and it's pretty hilarious. It's on Funny or Die. Funny or Die is very touch and go, but this is one of the ones where I think they, they, hit, they hit the ball out, the, out of the park. It's funny. It's good stuff. Yeah. Well... I think one of the things that just keeps running through my heads with the idea of a porno Game of Thrones is instead of off with his head, it's get his head off. <laughs> <laughs> you and your puns. That's okay. That's good. We like your puns. That's fine. <laughs> so <laughs> now, and the other thing that uh, I thought was funny this week is this Dutch and the Dutch gay only village. Right, they were gonna. There's this article about a gay-only village where oh, you had to be LGBT to live in this place. They were gonna build this whole village where you had to be LGBT, and the media was in a tizzy about it. It was a joke. It wasn't for real. This is one of those things. You know how they? What is that rule about not being able to tell the difference between a joke or reality on the internet? I don't know. I don't remember the rule, but there's one. There's one. Uh, and this was one of those cases. So the Dutch media, it, it looks like the southern city took part in an elaborate hoax announcing the construction of a gay-only village. Sounds fun, though. I have to admit that. <laughs> Not that we really need it. There's already San Francisco, right? <laughs> so the state broadcaster, NOS, and the National Daily Newspaper, NRC, reacted angrily after they fell for the hoax by publishing stories about plans for a community outside Tilburg, especially for gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender residents. If it exists, there's porn of it. Or, there's a, that's another rule. I think that's rule 34. Okay. I don't remember the rule for you can't tell the difference between a joke and the for real thing on the internet. Because there's, there's a bunch of things that sound like a joke. Like you were saying that if you hadn't experienced, if you hadn't had firsthand accounts of it, yeah. you wouldn't have believed your story about no, I wouldn't the, fan, the guy that was jizzing on his wife's belly button trying to get her pregnant. <laughs> so that, that's one of those cases. Like, is it real or is it? Oh, but I have to throw out one thing Memorex. since you said <laughs> about San Francisco. Yeah. I want people to start a campaign that set, what makes the San Francisco, and yes, I'm going to talk about sports, get rid of the 49ers and buy the Packers. Because the idea of the San Francisco Packers fills me with hilarity. <laughs> they could have transvestites they should, be their cheerleaders. Go ahead and cheerleaders. just expand the name out to Fudge Packers. Why not? <laughs> Just go ahead. Well, make it fun. That could actually be somebody's that, that would, job. That might be psychologically intimidating for the opposing team. Yeah, we the just fudge got... packers. Can you imagine if you're like <laughs> face to face, like staring them in the eye with the fudge packers, and you're not ready for that shit? Like, holy crap! <laughs> that would be that would be intimidating psychologically. I tell you. <laughs> oh, we just um, got beat up by yeah, the fudge is, packers. <laughs> <laughs> so it was uh, it was pretend. It was fake. The Rams. The Rams. About the, you know, There's the Rams. all kinds of sexual innuendo in football. I mean, come on. It's a pretty gay sport. It, it's pretty gay. You seen the way the guy sticks his fingers up in the, in between the, the guy spreads his legs and bends over and the other guy sticks his fingers like in his crotchal area mm -hmm. 
And they don't, and it's what we're supposed to think that's all macho and not gay at all. Come on. And they have a position called the receiver. Yeah, the wide end. <laughs> Isn't there the a wide end? Or? The wide receiver. Wide receiver. Yeah. There you go. The wide receiver. You know, that's the guy that gets fisted all the time. The wide receiver. <laughs> See, gay people should love sports. You, you would th- well, some do. I, 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 part- I personally am a big fan of men's gymnastics and diving and swimming. Pretty much any of the sports where they're they're wearing very little and they're in great shape, and they shave their bodies. Uh, why do gymnasts shave their bodies? What's the deal with that? Less air. I, the, it's less wind resistance, so oh. it doesn't flow. You see, you have to have the wind current to be just perfect in order to make those flips. And any amount of are you pulling could, this out of your ass? Yes, you are. No, keep going. I love it. Keep going. <laughs> well, any amount of air could actually send it off. Like golf, you need to know the air currents. Oh, so they shave off all of their hair. No wind resistance, and it's just a sleek flip. Well, what's the excuse for wrestlers? I understand divers a little bit, and I understand well, swimmers. I don't really completely understand divers. So I'm like, you just hit the water. Once you're once you hit the water, you're in. Like you, then you're, they're not judging anymore. Yeah, but they shave too, don't they? Well, wrestlers, I understand swimmers. I understand, I understand swimmers. I get it. Yeah, wrestlers. It's about having hair to grab onto. That oh. as you're, because have you ever had a friction burn on your arm where you have hair or something? It hurts worse than a friction burn where I'm kind of hurting for hair on my arms. To be completely uh, honest with you, okay. I probably don't know what you're well, talking about. Well, if you have body hair, friction burns <laughs> I can have hurt it. a lot it's just, worse. I can I can't grab it yeah, if I try. Because otherwise, while you're wrestling and you're pressing up against their hard bodies i'm getting aroused get keep going off. keep going and you know <laughs> that's why they also oil up a lot of the times before they wrestle is because it causes less friction less resistance turkish as oil wrestling for, exactly turkish oil wrestling they sh- they stick their hands down the pants trying to get a grip on something and well things. you gotta reach for a handle sometimes i am uh, i am trying i am a big fan of promoting turkish oil wrestling as a more broadly international sport like why i want to i want to why can't why can't this be a thing now like can we have it should be in high schools in colleges, especially with like college age men, right? We should have Turkish oil wrestling. I think in non You should have to be shaved and lubed. <laughs> I think in non Turkish oil wrestling you might lose some points there. For the, the really? sticking, sticking the hands down the pants. You might they do it all the time. It's t- it's totally a tactic. Yeah, You're allowed to they have they have these loose shorts. There's like these black shorts and the, the shorts are oiled up as well. They're just like covered in olive oil. And they stick their hands down the pants all the time because you can't get a grip. That's the whole point of it. Like, you can't get a grip on the other guy because they're all oiled up. Yeah. It's like taking slip and slide to the next level. Yeah. And wrestlers, by the way, there's a thing where wrestlers, we are so off to, who cares? They're wrestlers, like, they get boners all the freaking time. Yeah. But... Is there a thing about, like, I don't think they're necessarily gay, but there's something about, like, that aggression and that physical contact. There's something about it. Well, that makes these guys get boners. Yeah, well, on in their little tight spandex onelets. <laughs> it's yeah. Uh, there's a lot of aggression. There's a lot of that. On top of that, there's a lot of stimulation, regardless of whether. It's All right, from folks. Gender Thank you, you Jason, want. for trying to explain it. We are running out of time, but we'll be back next week. So, folks, leave your comments on today's show page about why you think wrestlers get boners all the time. You are listening to Flaming Freedom. Listen to us next week from 10 a.m. to noon on the Liberty Radio Network. Thanks for joining us.